Well, basically, we're using a technology which is called speckle tracking. Here we are tracking the motion of these bright little echoes that you see throughout the entire myocardium here. And with this, you're able to actually look at the percentage shortening of the myocardium. Especially important is the motion of the longitudinal function, which can be assessed both for the left and for the right ventricle. Now, the left ventricle, of course, was the first ventricle that we use speckle tracking on, and there's just so much data that shows it's an early marker of left ventricle dysfunction, and there's just so much data on this already. But there's also an increasing amount of data on the right ventricle showing that it works quite nicely. Now, if you're interested in learning more about speckle tracking, we have a complete course on speckle tracking where we also explain how it is used in the right ventricle in more detail. But just as a summary, what we're doing here is we're, of course, defining first of all which parts of the right ventricle should be tracked. In this case, we're only tracking here the lateral wall. And then we perform the analysis and the system basically gives us a percentage value of contraction, in this case, of the lateral wall. And this is a methodology which allows you to do a lot of calculations. Not only can we look at the entire myocardium, but also look at the individual segments, the base, the mid, and the apex. We have different ways of displaying these curves and, uh, and the data. But the bottom line is that we now know that there is a value that is somewhere in the range of minus 27, 28, which is normal. Now, this is a value which is higher than the global longitudinal strain that you would use for the left ventricle, simply because, as you remember, the right ventricle shows more longitudinal contraction. And there's been some discussions in the literature with different papers showing different cutoff values. Here we had some papers where the values were probably too low. But speckle tracking is now included in the guidelines as a methodology that you can use to assess right ventricle function. The mean Values for normal individuals for right ventricle strain is in the range of minus 29 plus minus 4.5%. You see it's a negative value, means it's contraction, shortening of the right ventricle wall. And they defined a lower threshold of minus 20%, which I personally believe is a little bit too low. Probably you would need to have a value of 25 or 26 as this threshold, but we'll see how it turns out in the future. The essence is that it's a parameter which is quite easy to actually obtain and which I have seen to be very, very reliable and a very good parameter that looks at this longitudinal function. I guess you can clearly see in this patient, it correlates also very well with what we see. We see the very poor right ventricle function and we see that the global strain here is minus 7.2, far away from being normal. And we also see that it's the basal segment which are specifically reduced in longitudinal function. So I guess there's going to be a lot of work being done. And if you have the capabilities to perform strain on your machine, then I would do it. And this is, at least in our laboratory, the method I use most frequently in addition to the visual assessment of right ventricle function and the S-wave and the top set. So a parameter which has a bright future and I guess it will get better and it might maybe help us tremendously in the assessment of right ventricle function.